I shredded, it. I shredded, it. I shredded the plants with it. That might help the birds in the room. Give them some of the energy. Why you weren't? I shredded. It was an iron. We just had a coffee was on. Ladies and gentlemen, please find your seats. The ceremony will begin in a moment.
During today's ceremony, Colonel Eric Schroeder will transfer command of the 2nd Healthcare Operations Squadron from Lieutenant Colonel Scott Carball to Lieutenant Colonel Terry Faden. The change of command is an official, formal, and brief ceremony deeply rooted in military tradition. It is a visible means of handing the reins of command to the new commander. This ceremony is traditionally conducted in front of members of the unit, which allows each person to observe the transfer of authority and responsibility to their new commander. The ceremony is simple and direct. As the squadron guideline is exchanged, it represents the transfer of responsibility, authority, and accountability for the resources, mission, airmen, and families of the healthcare operations squadron. The COVID-19 situation presents us with many unique challenges. However, our goal today is to continue the change of command tradition while recognizing the current constraints of the world. The presiding officer for today's ceremony is Colonel Dr. Eric Schroeder, Commander, Second Medical Group. We are honored to have many special guests in attendance. Please hold your applause until all guests are announced. Commander, Second Bomb Wing, Colonel Michael Miller. Vice Commander, Second Bomb Wing, Colonel Scott Wire Muller. Interim Command Chief, Second Bomb Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Jamie Prince. And Senior Enlisted Leader, Second Medical Group, Senior Master Sergeant Amy Miller, and her spouse, Chief Master Sergeant Jeremy Miller. We extend a warm welcome to Lieutenant Colonel Carball's spouse, Mrs. Yolanda Carball, who is joining us today via social media. We also welcome Lieutenant Colonel Phelan's family, her parents, Colonel Retired Patrick and Mrs. Alice Phelan, her sister, Miss Kelly Phelan, and family friend, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Karen Reed. Finally, we welcome all commanders, directors, squadron commanders, chiefs, spouses, friends, members of the 2nd Healthcare Operations Squadron, Team Barksdale, our community partners, and everyone joining us from social media platforms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Please stand for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem and the invocation by Chaplain Johnson. Some to amazing achievement. Command. 
as Lieutenant Colonel Carrie Phelan takes the mantle of leadership, bless her with keen insight, firmness of character, and a 2020 vision for the healthcare operations squadron during this challenging time. May the squadron be blessed through her leadership. Be as Lieutenant Colonel Phelan's family that they would know how to support her and the airmen of the Second Edge Cause. We ask now, too, for your blessing on Lieutenant Colonel Scott Carball and his family as they move to the Defense Health Agency in Virginia. May this new era of their lives bring fresh enjoyment of your bounty and increased sight, insight of your life. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The Commander, 2nd Medical Group, Colonel Eric Schroeder. so much for coming to this great event. Um, I'd specifically like to thank Colonel Miller and Colonel Y. Mueller, uh, Chief Prince, uh, for uh, showing up, and then also Colonel, Colonel White Cotton and Colonel Carver, Carvard, I'm going to mess that up, um, are out there as well. Uh, and then particularly um, the Phelan family, so Colonel Phelan and, and Miss Alice, uh, Kelly, and then her, their family friend, Chief Reed. Thank you so much for coming up from, from Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and Houston uh, to share this share this moment, um, and then also realizing that uh, Mrs. Carbaugh is on the road out right now. We will send our love out to her um, during this special day. So uh, we'll talk about Lieutenant Colonel Carbaugh a little bit here. Uh, he brought a range of uh, experience and expertise to the second medical group. I've only been in this job for less than a week, uh, and it was obvious from getting tur turnover from Colonel Hudson uh, as well as talking to key players in the medical group, what kind of impact this man had on the group. Um, before I talk about that impact, I'll, I'll share with you, and you'll see it in the, in the program, this man has a distinguished record as a prior enlisted member uh, for over 10 years. Um, and then he has a diverse experience as an officer, um, both as a staff PA, physician's assistant, uh, PA training program coordinator, a flight commander, and POP flight commander, no less, um, an Air Force level inspector, a commander, so this is his second tour, and then deployment experience. So just the kind of man that you'd want, uh, person that you'd want at this, uh, in this facility doing the things that Barksdale and the second bomb wing does. Um, from looking at his record and then talking to him, uh, it's obvious that he's proven to be operationally minded, patient-centered, uh, safety-focused, and a people-oriented leader of women and men. So let me give you some examples. Um, as far as being operationally minded, as you guys are tracking, and I'm learning, we're relearning, uh, the importance of these bomber task force, right, BTFs. So he just recently directed a no-notice deployment uh, line leading seven flights, 34 medics, and then 341 personnel, uh, which was the fastest strike ever. This is real-world stuff that's happening, and it's a team effort here at a base like this, and the medics are a key part of that team, and he was a key part of that, of that action. Um, he's patient-centered. So he implemented a first stop primary care behavioral health model. So what this did was this increased unit outreach, which is extremely important, uh, increasing the appointments to, uh, or it had an increase of thousands of appointments, and then increased the time, the availability, the access to care of these appointments. And as you guys are tracking, uh, especially in these days of, uh, of COVID, mental health is always uh, a key concern among supervisors, command teams, families, um, and especially with COVID, it's become even more important. And he's making things happen, or made things happen, to make sure that we're bringing the right services to the right people at the right time. Along those lines, he was integral in uh, expanding the services for PTSD, that post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, which is another um, prevalent, uh, but and yet likely underreported issue that our, our folks have. He is safety focused, so his unit, uh, for three years in a row, earned the Air Force Global Strike Command Ambulatory Patient Safety Award. Um, so he led his squadron through the AFMS's largest transition, enabling 91,000 visits, 105,000 um, uh, RVUs, and then s supporting $6.5 million in service delivery. That's a lot of bean counting and numbers games that we have to do in the medical business, but the bottom line is patients were served, and they were served in a safe uh, manner. He also slashed 6,000 open encounters which means when you go to the dock and you get seen, 
uh, medical documentation is ex extremely important. And an open encounter means that for some reason that encounter wasn't closed. It might have been closed in some other form, especially when we had paper records. But now with the electronic health, health records, it's critical that there are appropriate documentations in the health record to deliver safe care. And he closed thousands of them, or led the effort to close thousands of them. Um, and he also drove a 99% on time rate, which is critical for healthcare delivery, right? Because you got to have kind of like a bombs on target thing with the operators. you got to make sure that we're doing the right thing for our patients. And, and a lot of that uh, requires timely, uh, 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 timeliness. So to wrap up the safety focus, we had a joint commission, which is the civilian uh, accrediting agency, roll through Barksdale like they do all the MTF, all the medical treatment facilities. Um, and. Uh, earned a three-year accreditation. Lieutenant Colonel Carbaugh led 29 lateral inspections and ID and fixed 105 discrepancies in preparation for this high-level, strenuous, kind of NSI-ish level uh, inspection for the medics. So, good on you. How did he do all this? Is because he's people-oriented. He's obviously an expert, so we, get, we, we are experts when we get to this level, or, or we should be at least, but as a, as a commander, now you, how do you influence folks? How do you make it happen? How do you get other people to follow your lead. And he does that by being an engaged leader of women and men. So proof of that, uh, objectively, is he's had six group, two wing, and one MAGCOM award winner under his leadership. Uh, he's had one first sergeant and three squadron commander selects under his leadership. So it's obvious he's investing in his people. And then I just read to you accomplishments that he didn't do by himself. He did it because he's leading folks to do all those things. And that's just a snippet of his accomplishments. On top of all this, uh, he was uh, part of the conversion from the medical operations squadron to now what you're seeing is this healthcare operations squadron. It might sound like it's maybe just a name change or something, but it's not. It takes coordination and uh, planning and execution, uh, and uh, he, he made it happen. So I could continue to talk about him because he is a fantastic guy with a wealth of experience that's dedicated a lot to this, to this unit. Um, after talking to him, what I saw, what his record says, is consistent with what his mindset is uh, of seeking, seeking to change the culture by grassroots means and developing airmen. He doesn't just say it, he lives it, and I just told you some of the reasons why it's obvious that this is the case. And that's exactly what he did. So Lieutenant Colonel Carbaugh, thank you very much for your dedicated leadership and service to this unit. Um, you will excel in your next position, and uh, we hate to, to lose you. Okay, now to Lieutenant Colonel Phelan. Welcome. Uh, it is great to have you. Uh, and again, being the new guy, uh, I get to talk about folks that I really haven't met uh, other than just in the past week and, and talk about. But just like Lieutenant Colonel Carbaugh, her reputation precedes her. She was an undisputed unanimous number one choice for this position. Um, she is an accomplished clinician, leader, and innovator, exactly what you want in today's world. Um, and what I didn't mention for Lieutenant Colonel Carbaugh and that Lieutenant Colonel Phelan is about to inherit, right, is this whole COVID-19 thing. It's funny, I just said all this stuff. I didn't even mention COVID-19 and the stress and the actions and all the behind the scenes activities that occur uh, in a medical group trying to support um, not only the wing, but outside agencies and make sure the medical group is uh, doing what it needs to do and they take care of the people. Um, but uh, uh, huge challenges uh, who you're perfect for. She's perfect for. So being an accomplished clinician, leader, and innovator, uh, she is an experienced, uh, an expert, board-certified optometrist. She has operational experience having deployed in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Uh, she is a leader having had multiple flight commander positions in various medical treatment facilities. So she has organized military construction projects, developed GME, which is a graduate medical education programs, innovated medical operations in the units that she's been in, and then collaborated with our sister services. So things that when you make a medical leader uh, or you nominate someone to be a medical leader, things that you're looking for that you can uh, operationally contribute directly to the wing's effort, right? We're just not a standalone hospital serving the community. That's definitely a big part of our job. But we also got to take the fight uh, to, the, uh, to the enemy and part of, part of doing that, right, is enabling the wing to do that. She's done it and she'll do an exceptional job. So she is the perfect person um, at the perfect time, and I say for the perfect place. So, welcome, and uh, we'll get this thing on, on the road.
Thank you, Colonel Schroeder. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Colonel Schroeder presents the Meritorious Service Medal to Lieutenant Colonel Carvel. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Meritorious Service Medal to Lieutenant Colonel Scott Carball. Lieutenant Colonel Scott L. Carball distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, 2nd Healthcare Operations Squadron, 2nd Medical Group, 2nd Bomb Wing, Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana. During this period, Colonel Carball expertly led his squadron execution of over 187,000 patient encounters valued at $13.4 million while steering multiple process improvements that reduced patient wait time by 53%, resulted in primary care achieving the best access in over three years. A proponent of mental health, he implemented a first stop primary care behavioral health model that yielded 3,100 additional appointments for the base population, increased unit outreach opportunities, and ensured patients were seen 15 days sooner than before. Additionally, Colonel Carball prioritized active duty access by Institute and Direct Care Physical Therapy, which increased productivity by 34%, saved the Air Force $2.3 million in network leakage, and freed up 1,200 primary care appointments. Furthermore, he directed a no-notice real-world deployment medical process in line that screened and cleared 341 personnel in record time, facilitating the fastest bomber task force response ever. Finally, his steadfast leadership and dedication to excellence was critical to the second medical group earning Air Force Global Strike Command's Best Ambulatory Patient Safety Award in 2018 and 2019. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Colonel Carball reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Thank you, Colonel Schroeder. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Lieutenant Colonel Scott Carball, Commander, 2nd Healthcare Operations Squadron, will now make some remarks. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming out here today. Um, you're going wit to witness me try to read cue cards with bad lighting and bad eyes. So, is there an optometrist in the house? I think there's a couple, right? <laughs> so, uh, I want to start off by thanking Captain Nawami, uh, Lieutenant McIlvain, and Sergeant uh, Cosma for helping put this together along with protocol for making this happen and guiding them with it. This went off very seamlessly. Uh, going into my first command, uh, it, it was kind of a hot mess coming in. There was a lot of change and a lot of thrash and, it, and we did a lot of things and improv at the last minute and we didn't have to do any of that even with COVID, so thank you. You guys did a great job. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Tech Sergeant Lenyon, who sang the national anthem, that's who was recorded there. She works at FSS. True story, um, I was at the Colonel DePeisler uh, ceremony for dedicating his building back, what was it, about six months ago, I think it was. And uh, I'm kind of a, you know, cheesy patriotic guy, and I'm standing there. She stands up and sings that national anthem live, and I mean, every hair on my head and back and neck stood up. That was one of the best versions I've ever heard in my life. And uh, so I actually got a little bit creepy, went on, e on Outlook and emailed her and said, hey, you don't know me, I'm, I'm really not creepy and I don't drive an ice cream truck. <laughs> but would you come, uh, would you come sing at my, uh, at my change of command next, next summer? So I, I just want first dibs before you reserve. Well, then COVID hit, so it had to be recorded. So I appreciate uh, that, sh that we were able to get that recording because that that's a coin worthy uh, rendition of the National Anthem, and Sergeant Dotson knows her, so she's going to hook me up with that, so. Um, also, I want to I wanna thank Colonel Hudson for, uh, he's not here anymore, obviously, but for his mentorship, uh, for his uh, leadership and guidance. I don't think there was a better person to guide us through the whole COVID crisis these last few months. Um, early on, uh, he was supposed to be out flying for a couple days, and he said, hey, I know this COVID thing is new, don't worry about it, just can you go brief the boss and stand up? And I was like, oh crap, no, I just, that's not me, I can't do it, you know. Thank God his flights got canceled, and so I didn't get to, I didn't have to do that because he was the man for the job. I'm a primary care guy. Um, I wanna thank Colonel Schroeder for, uh, for uh, reading up on my bio a little bit there and uh, getting to know me in the last few days. I know 
we didn't have much crossover, but I can tell already we would have worked really well together. You'd have been, you'd have been a blast. Um, Colonel Miller, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for hiring me and not firing me. I appreciate that. You've made for an extremely entertaining two-year tour. I want to thank my executive team, um, my three letters, my suits, my, my fellow commanders. You guys are the best, man. You guys crushed it. Um, and my wife's listening right now. She's going to go and say, oh, my God, he said crush again. But you guys did a great job. Uh, we spoke a little bit this morning about, uh, you know, the great thing about having a group like that. You've got all these different minds and different experiences. Uh, we have different ideas sometimes. And sometimes we lock horns a little bit or whatever. But in the end, I think we came up with some of the best solutions. And to watch this team grow and uh, the progress of the medical group in, as a whole over the last two years has been exciting for me to watch. Uh, and then I got to thank my rock, uh, Yolanda, who's out on the road right now. She couldn't be here. Um, we just had the most adventurous move experience in the history of PCSs. I've been doing this for 35 years, and I'm going to write a book on this one. But uh, so she had to run ahead this morning so, so that she could get there and meet the movers so we don't have to wait another month to get our household goods. So she really wanted to be here. So. Um, when I got here, my focus was not on metrics. I made that very clear. Um, my focus wasn't on metrics. I am a very mission ops minded guy, um, which made it hard for me when, when the you know, big Air Force took away the operational side of my squadron and, and uh, made us all dependent care pretty much uh, and retiree care. But there's huge value in that too. Um, my focus when I came here, after years being an airman, uh, a little A airman coming in with no stripes and working my way up and uh, then years as an officer and eventually after a few years I finally drank the leadership Kool-Aid and discovered that uh, leadership is important. One of the things I've noticed over the years is uh, one of the biggest mistakes leadership makes is they get so caught up on, yeah we want to meet the mission, but it's, they get so caught up that they, they try to they try to direct it too much, and they, they get too caught up and reactive on, on meeting a metric that if you don't do it the right way and you just crush your people to get there um, for right now to look good right now for your boss, what ends up happening is you'll look good for that, you'll have your 15 minutes of fame, and then whether you leave, you know, it might be when you leave or it might be just while you're there later on, it's gonna crumble again because you didn't make that foundation strong. So my, my plight this whole time has been to uh, start with the grassroots and we've been working hard on developing our airmen um, trying to empower them to learn to think critically uh, to fail forward um, i know a lot of people pay lip service to it but I, i'll tell you I, I don't feel i did and i know doggone well my my leadership my flight leaders the greatest flight leaders ever did not do that they invested in their people and the changes that i've seen uh, in in the squadron over the last two years uh, not just as airmen but accomplishing the mission and true citizenship uh, and true teamwork has been amazing. It's, it, it's been exactly why I wanted to be a commander. So I want to thank you all for that. Um, when I look back, I'm not going to, I mean, my decoration sounds pretty cool, actually. So uh, it, was, it sounded good, but I didn't do any of that. Um, you, you guys did that, and my team did that over the last couple of years. It wasn't just my team, it was a meg group effort. So it's, it, it takes, you know, there's public health, there's flight medicine, there's everything. Nothing happens in a vacuum. It's all of us working together, and I think we did a great job of doing it. We really answered the call when we needed to. Um, what The things that I'm gonna remember when I look back on this um, is not necessarily gonna be uh, probably the BTF or, or, or the access to care that got better or whatever. What I'm gonna remember is the, is the teamwork and the camaraderie and watching my airmen cover down for each other and helping each other out. I'm gonna remember Airman Doxy, where are you at? Are you here today? Airman Doxy, when COVID first kicked out, I mean, he was brand new airman, only been here a couple months. And we had a bunch of uh, Munzers, thank you maintenance group for sending us your guys. Again, teamwork, right? bunch of Munzers coming over and helping us because our guys were uh, getting crushed with the COVID thing and we're still trying to learn how to react to this. So we got a bunch of Munz people helping us with garden doors, manpower, all kinds of stuff. Here's Airman Doxy, A1C, right out of school. Actually, I think he was a one strike at the time. And he went down, bought a bunch of breakfast burritos of, of his own money 
uh, I think from the bowling alley or the golf course or something, and went around feeding these MUNS guys. That, that's awesome, man. I mean, who does that? You know, so it's not like you have all that extra spare change. If you do, then OSI, he's right over there. <laughs> So I also think of uh, when, I, when I got here, people like uh, Lacey Mitchamore, uh, my old secretary who Colonel Colbert stole from me, um, who was the most amazing secretary I think I've had. I've had four great ones in two commands. Lacey made sure everything was absolutely smooth coming in. She walked me around when I got here. Um, but then she got replaced by Amy Cosma. Uh, who has been equally as dynamic, amazing, and also my key spouse. And then there's another one, Jessica Rashawn, who's also a key spouse, who's actually in the MDIS squadron. Why I'm mentioning them is, I don't think I've ever seen so much energy with, as those three with trying to ignite the, uh, the key spouse program, um, trying to get uh, uh, events around the med group, you know, morale events off the, you know, off the ground. Uh, sometimes there were funding challenges, whether it was the, with the kids' party or other, other things, the kids' Christmas party. They didn't give up. They found a way, and they crushed it. And everything they've put together has been amazing. And so everything they've done has been above and beyond, and it's not because they were looking for recognition. It's because they were trying to make things better because they, sent, they have that sense of family. I think about uh, recently at our med group, medical group uh, commander's call, uh, the racial disparity issue has been a very tough subject, and when you have a, a subject that, that that's that emotional and that raw, it's very hard to uh, please everybody with your message. No matter what, you're going to have a bunch of different opinions. I think we all want to see what's right, but we all might have a little different uh, view of how to get there. So, uh, Senior Airman Hawkins uh, put together a, a thing for our Med Group Commander's Call which was a very, I wouldn't have thought, I'm a global thinker and I, didn't, I wouldn't have thought of this. She put together a, 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 a talking point for our med group commander's call that included multiple races, looking at the, the problem from multiple standpoints. And it wasn't widely received by all as, as great. Some, it, it, it took its criticism. But what I was proud of is it was global thinking, it was from the heart for all four of them, and it was, uh, Lieutenant McElvain, Dr. Bales, Sergeant Sparza, and Aaron Hawkins. They had the courage to stand up there, and they took some criticism for what the way they did it. But man, they stood proud. They stood, you know, they stood strong, and um, I was just very proud of that. So things like that matter. Other things that I've that I've seen that really uh, are going to stick to me are my flight leaders. I have the greatest flight leaders ever. You want to talk about leading from the front? They lead from the front. I'm thinking of Captain Wami, who was running two flights at one time for over a year, um, who was, as a nurse, we were getting swamped with all the, uh, all the uh, open encounters and the delinquent telephone consults and you know, getting back to patients in, in, in time because we were undermanned. Uh, Captain Wami's out there crushing it right, as a flight commander, putting just as much effort into helping her nurses out boots on ground as she was running two flights. So all the while, I've never seen a cooler cucumber under pressure. I don't know how you do it, LaToya. So I'm gonna have to learn that from you someday. I see my uh, flight leaders, Sergeant Harmon and Sergeant Esparza, flight chiefs, when things are getting tight on Manning, when, when we don't have enough airmen to check in patients or give immunizations, and they're coming out there doing things that aren't even truly in their job skills, right? I've got a physical therapy tech learning how to do blood pressures and baby screenings and coming down and helping. And then Asparza, uh, as a paramedic, is down there helping in a number of places. They don't have to do that. They could sit back and, and let it roll, but they didn't. They, get, they went in there and they weren't too proud to roll up their sleeves and do uh, A1C senior army work. And I thought that was awesome. It was a little bit win-win for them, too, because it finally, working with those pedi pediatrics, they were able to uh, look eye to eye with, with some of those patients, you know. So if you stand up, Asparza, we're going to that. <laughs> yeah. So she got to see eye to eye with some of them. Sergeant Dotson, same thing. Sergeant Dotson, when think times got lean, Sergeant Dotson was out there, Master Sergeant, doing, doing airman's work uh, when she needed to. Very first weekend of COVID, um, we were in the middle of a move, uh, trying to move uh, operational medicine to the old family and health, and then move family health down to operational medicine to the old flight med. So Sergeant Dotson and I decided to go ahead and start seeing the patients for that weekend. Here's a master sergeant 
again, not too proud to stand, step in and do a, an airman's work. And she did that time and time again. So it, it, it's never even a question. They just come running to the fire. Lieutenant McElvain over here is a PA. He's another, he's a fellow, actually, we have a lot in common. Um, he's, a, he's also about 12, 13 years uh, in prior enlisted. We were both rad techs as a, enlisted. Now he's a PA, just like me. Probably a better one. But uh, here he is. Most guys in their first couple of years out of school, whether it's med school, PA school, whatever, their first couple of years, it's just baptism by fire and medicine, and, and that's all they think about. They don't think about military, they don't, they just, they're just still trying to learn medicine while they're working. And here's a guy that's out here, comes to me saying, boss, um, do you mind if I uh, review, uh, if, if I write some uh, award packages and help with the EPR writing for the troops, and do you, can I sit on a, a, a selection board and all this stuff, you know? That's amazing. So most providers, I can tell you from my world, they don't do that. They don't think like that. He has a burning desire to take care of his people. And so that's the stuff I'm going to remember. Major O'Hart, I'm going to throw you under the bus again because you are like my favorite. You are like my favorite success story. Major O'Hart's my pediatrician who, when she got here, apologies to any providers, physicians or providers out there, had the typical, um, or came across as the typical Head down, look, don't bother me meet with military stuff. I just, I'm here to see patients. I love seeing patients. I just want to be a pediatrician. Um, and then uh, we saw something in her that she didn't even see in herself. And I decided she was going to be a flight commander. And uh, from day one, she made some very difficult decisions that were not wildly popular with some other people and made her own life less comfortable. But, and they're decisions that most other providers would not have made. Uh, because it would have it would have meant self-sacrifice. She made those sacrifices. She made that decision. She stood strong. She took a little criticism from within, but she stood stood strong. She did the right thing, and the right people benefited, and the mission benefited. And so I've seen two or three more examples just like that of making the hard decision. Doesn't even come consult and ask me anymore. She just does it. Uh, the teamwork uh, last weekend. Uh, Sergeant Cosmetz and his team put together a uh, golfing going away for me. Uh, so we got to go out there and they got to laugh at my golf swing, my Charles Barkley golf swing. So, um, and if it wasn't for our brothers and sisters in OMRS, thank you very much. Um, covering our COVID watch that weekend, I would, that wouldn't have been able to happen. So thank you to OMRS. So, got also publicly embarrassed my suit, my other suit. Sergeant Dotson was my current suit for the last month. Prior to that, it's been Sergeant Miller. Um, we've been pretty much locked at the hip for the last almost two years. Coming in, full disclosure, I had a great superintendent coming in and I was very reluctant to give her up, but the situation dictated that we needed to, that it needed to go that way. Sergeant Miller since then, um, she was unknown. I tried doing all the road calls. I've been around for 35 years. You'd think I'd know somebody that knew her. Nobody knew her. She was coming out of TI school. I was like, oh, great. She's going to make me stand at attention. She's, but she came in, and I have never seen such a great balance of knowing when to hug and when to put your foot up their butt. And so her, uh, our why is very similar. She's more level-headed than I am, and she thinks things through a little bit better, a little bit less impulsive than I am. And so it's like yin and yang. But I want to thank you. You have been absolutely phenomenal. She's, uh, she's getting ready to pin on chief, hopefully next month. And she, I guarantee she's going to be one of the best chiefs anybody's ever worked with. So um, thank you for keeping me on track. And, and I apologize for the times in our meetings when I say things like, Laziness is the key to effective leadership and make your skin crawl. <laughs> so the other things I'm going to remember is how well the Meg group came together. Uh, when we experienced some tragedy over the last couple of years, we've had several deaths in the, in the squadrons among, throughout the group, whether it was our own members or whether it was a dependence of our own members or retirees. Um, and it was tough. And so, uh, when you have tragedy like that, it, it can either crush your, your unit or it can make it better. Uh, and what I saw was we all came together strong. Um, I really appreciate everybody. If, if anything, it made us stronger. I felt more of a sense of family after that. 
Uh, I know with our member, we still we spoke to his mother today, as a matter of fact. Um, so we've stayed in touch with the, with the, uh, with the family of the deceased, um, because that's what families do. And I was so happy to hear how many of my members actually are still in, in contact with his family, so, and doing things for him. It's, it's amazing. That's teamwork, and that's what we're supposed to be about. Uh, hats off to our mental health team, who used to be mine until Katie stole them from me last year. So, uh, but uh, the mental health team has been absolutely phenomenal. They, that disaster mental health team has been having to answer, has, has been stood up more times in the last two years than I think I've seen in my entire career. And they've crushed it every time, and that's not easy. It, that kind of thing takes a toll on you, even if you don't know the people, right? Their job is very difficult. Now imagine when they're having to respond to, you know, to instances of people that they actually knew. That's unbelievably hard. I don't know how they do it, but my hat's off to them. You guys, you guys rock. And I know Katie, I know you're proud as hell of those guys. You've got to be. Um, the other thing that came out of that, at least with ours was, I want to give a shout out to my defenders and to, my, to the fire department. Um, for coming together on ours, the guy we lost was uh, Sergeant Bailey. Um, I'm gonna say short shorts because he wore really short shorts and it makes me laugh. So, um, so with Bailey, uh, he was wildly popular. Everybody knew him. He's a little bit rough around the edges sometimes. Uh, he was Mr. Tough Love, but his why was always pointing more. He was, he was absolutely a mentor. Uh, he, he was phenomenal. And so uh, first responders are kind of a tight unit. You know, whether they're cops or whether they're fire department, whether they're medics. And so uh, the way the fire department came together and put together, they insisted on putting together a ceremony. It's called, what's that called? It's uh, the last call, is that what it is? So, or the last, yeah, the last recall. So it was phenomenal and it meant so much to the family. And then the defenders uh, raised money, sold t-shirts that we still wear as morale t-shirts. Uh, on special occasions in Perry's honor and uh, they took the proceeds and raised two thousand dollars that went right back to the family so that is amazing um, people ask me why you know why are you staying in the Air Force for 35 years you know that's you could make so much more money on the outside well that's the kind of thing that's kept me in for 35 years so Carrie you um, this is what you're walking into you're picking up just a phenomenal group of airmen. And we've done, I think we've done great things as a team, not just HCOS, but the entire big group, uh, the entire wing. Um, you're picking up a great team, and I know after, after uh, meeting you and spending some time with you, I can see where your why is at, I can see what you're all about. She's gonna take us even further downfield. I know you guys are gonna go on to greater things than you are right now, so. Good luck. You're not going to need luck. You've got a great team, but I know you're going to go do great things. And that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Carbo. On behalf of the men and women of the Second Healthcare Operations Squadron, I would like to thank Mrs. Carbo for. Falls Church, Virginia, working at the Defense Health Agency. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command ceremony. The passing of the second healthcare operations squadron, squadron guide on symbolizes the passing of authority for the resources, mission, and personnel of the squadron from Lieutenant Colonel Scott Carball to Lieutenant Colonel Kerry Phelan. The guide on bearer is Master Sergeant Robriel Dotson, Squadron Superintendent. Publish the order. Attention to orders. 
Department of the Air Force, Headquarters, Second Medical Group, Second Bone Wing, Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana, Special Order Number G-021, Lieutenant Colonel Kerry A. Phelan assumes command of the Second Healthcare Operations Squadron from Lieutenant Colonel Scott L. Carball, effective 17 July 2020, signed Eric W. Schroeder, Colonel, United States Air Force, Commander, Second Medical Group. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my honor to present the Commander, 2nd Healthcare Operations Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Kerry Phelan. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Phelan will now make some remarks. Squadron. Secondly, Colonel Schroeder, Colonel Hudson, Lieutenant Colonel Carbach, and the rest of the medical group leadership team, thank you for recommending me. Colonel Carbach, under your leadership, HCOS has only excelled. I look forward to continuing the momentum and building on those successes. We will continue to live striker culture and supporting the mission. To the squadron, I am so very excited to be here and to be stepping into this role. Just the excitement and the honor to serve with you and for you guys is just beyond words. Finally, I'd like to thank Captain Noami, Staff Sergeant Cosma, and y'all's team on putting together this change of command with all of the changing COVID restrictions Thank you very much for taking the time out of your schedule. And again, thank you for this honor to come and serve with you guys. I'm so excited to be here. And from what everybody has mentioned about the med group as a whole, obviously to include the squadron, I mean, to serve you guys, the quality of people, I could have asked to match at a better place. Thank you so much. And amongst all the stuff that we did talk about um, over the last couple of days, Colonel Cabra did go over some traditions here. I just came from Lackland, so our operational is a little different, but being back at a um, big operational base, some of the traditions, um, he did tell me there are some easy ways to get some free drinks around here. So um, we'll just kind of check it out. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Phelan. On behalf of the men and women of the 2nd Healthcare Operations Squadron, I would like to welcome you to our squadron family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please stand for the playing of the Air Force song, the departure of the official party and family. We regret we will not post the reception due to the current Air Force guidelines, but please join us in welcoming Lieutenant Colonel Phelan as you depart while observing the six feet social distancing rule. Thank you for attending today's change of command ceremony and have a great day.